where two or three gather together in my name, who is there? Hmm? He is here. That means we are in his presence. So when we are in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Praise God. So that joy is going to be fulfilled today. How do you like that? Amen. I want everybody to say amen. amen. Because it is going to be a fulfillment of his grace. People base their decision on variety of things. Variety of things. How they are doing it? They will check the ultimate. What is the ultimate they will do? First thing, first. The urgent one. Lord things first. The unpleasant, last thing first. The unfulfilling, dull things first. That's the way the people, when he does it. But Paul says to get back on track, focus on four things. What Paul says? Four things. What he says? Work on yourself. You are great asset or worst liability. In Psalm 119, 109 says, My life is continually in my hands. Where is my life? It's in my hand. Because the Lord has blessed you, given you health, given you strength, given you everything, and then he says, life is in your hand. Yet, I do not forget your law. That means no matter, my, I can say that my life is in my hand, but I'll stand next to you. I'll stand next to you. Your, your law is going to guide me. Your strength is going to lead me and everything. Work your priorities. Fight for the important area. Fight for the important areas. Work in your strength. You can reach your potential if you do. You can reach your potential if you do. That's what it says in Psalm 17, 15. As for me, I will see your faith in righteousness. What is my potential? Seek his face and I will find. And I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. That is my goal. That is my focus. That is my everything. That if I do that one, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Work with your colleagues. You can't be effective alone. You have to go as a company. You must work together. As a GMI, we have to work together. Then only we can be successful. Now we are going to see what Apostle Paul tells us in Philippines 3, 13 and 14. That is the base word today. Philippines 3, 13 and 14. I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. That's the only one thing he wants to do. I'm not apprehended, you are great, and I'm trying to reach there. But I will have to do something in my life, leave the things which is not required, leave it behind, and move forward to the things which are supposed to be. I do not count myself apprehended. What do you mean? When he says this word, when he feel, why he feels this way? Why he feels that way? One touch of Jesus in his life, his focus is changed. His focus totally changed one touch. And he understood that he is my savior and my healer and my sustainer. One touch. Question, am I progressing or lack in area of my life? Of course, she started a better way. She is trying to achieve an area. So am I progressing or I am lacking in any area? That means the question asked, we have to ask ourselves. It's a daily check of in our life. It must be checked every day. Because we may uh, grow sometime, 
and then stagnate. So we should not be in the stagnant area, but we should grow. In Philippians 1.10 says, that you may approve that are excellent. Which will get approval when you do something excellent. And focus in excellency in everything you do. In your daily life, in your working life, or anything you do, try to do the excellency. But you may achieve the excellency, but you can progress on that. Sincere without offense. You have to be sincere in everything you do without offense. Because that one will bring you back. So till the day of Christ. That means it is not today and tomorrow, but till the day of Christ. That means we, till we see him, our progress and our process should continue. In Philippians 1.11 says, Righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. We all know that one. Make sure to practice all the fruit in life through the Spirit. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That means every one of them we have to practice and we have to try to bring it to the excellence and we should be in a place of sincerity in that one when we do that one, our attitude change, our circumstances will change, our situations will change, and we are in a process to go till the day of Christ. So, what we can say? We are simply a bulb. Jesus is at work within us. Where is he? The kingdom of God is within you, right? Kingdom of God is within you. In the person of his Holy Spirit, he is guiding you. The day one you are born again, the Spirit of the Lord it comes and dwells in you and guides you in every step. So when he is going to guide you in a step and Jesus is working in your life, you will be transformed. Of course, there are shortcomings in life, but we can overcome by following the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In uh, Philippians 1, 12 to 14 says, everything happens for something good. That's what the world will say. Everything happens for something good, no matter good or bad. Sometimes we say we went through the hardship, we went through the suffering for something good in the later days. But here, he Paul says, everything happened for something good for the extension of the gospel. He is not worried about anything of himself, but he is worried about the extension of the gospel is going to be. Because he says the people in the palace knew the, people, the guards of the guards, which the whole army guards know that he is doing the work of God and he has come there. to string. He comes and they put him in jail. Why they put him in jail? Because he's preaching the gospel. Here, what I want to do is something a different little bit, because this portion onwards is going to be a little bit important for me, important for every one of us in our lives. So we are going to see, yesterday he was preaching, uh, Dilip was preaching, 1 Thessalonians 1, 5. Now we are going to exercise that in our life, and we are going to ask the Lord to implement in our life. So... We are going to, everybody going to stand together and we are going to claim that one. 1 Thessalonians 1, 5. Let's read together. The gospel is not just word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and much in assurance. Amen. That means... A word, it's not just a word only, but it has got the power of the Holy Spirit built into the word. And it's much assurance in our life. So let's pray. Father, let your word come powerfully. Let your love touch your people. Holy Spirit of God, take complete control. And let your assurance be upon your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Sit down. 
But I want to know you, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out to be further furtherance of the gospel, so that it has come an evident to the whole palace guard and to the rest that my chains are in Christ. That's the word I wanted to catch up. I want you to, people to catch up. My chains are in Christ. He is so particular in that saying that one. He didn't say, they put me in chain. I am in jail or I am in trouble or I am in something, horrible place. But he sees that chain and he says, I am chained in so the atmosphere and the thought pattern is totally changed for him because he doesn't consider that he is in trouble, but he is so joyful that he is chained in Christ. He is chained in Christ. We have to think in our life, where is my chain end? Where is my chain end? Is it in Christ or in the world? Because in the world, what he says, it can be in adultery, it can be in fornication, it can be in uncleanness, it can be in lewdness, it can be in idolatry, sorcery, hatred, connect, uh, contentions, jealousy, outburst of wrath, selfish ambition and dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalry. This is all in the world. Am I? bound with that one, or my chains are in Christ. Where am I going? Where is my focus? Where I should reach? So he says so specifically, and he says, it is better that I am in chain, in Christ, my brothers are getting stronger. They go out and preach the gospel without fear, because they got strengthened because they know that I am chained in Christ. The people guard in the guard in the army, they know that I am chained in Christ. And the things which are supposed to pertain to the life of others understood that I am in Christ. It's not the chain is a matter. He tells one more thing also. On the road to Damascus, I am somebody. Well educated got the letter from the high priest in my hand, the law I know left and right, I am, I am somebody. But when, he, when Jesus met him on the road to Damascus, he is nobody. He understood that one. He couldn't see, he couldn't walk, he couldn't go. Then someone else to come and pray over him in the name of Jesus, be healed. Then he knew his pathetic situation that he cannot do unless the Lord is with him. That kind of transformation in life, a man will go an extra mile. That's why he said, I am not apprehended. The one who touched me and healed me is apprehended me. The one who saw me on the road to Damascus apprehended me. So our life also, there are many turns and situation comes. We have to make sure Am I in Christ? Is it I am attached to the Christ? Am I, my walk is towards the goal. Am I reaching in a proper way and the proper things I'm doing? What my chains are in Christ tells me, not my will, thy will. Not my way, thy way. Not my path, thy path. If we put it at every perspective in our life, we can reach our goal. Because he said, I will be with you. I will strengthen you. I will lead you. Never said that one, we'll see you tomorrow. He never said that. I am with you 24-7. Let's put it this way. I want to... Uh, in a, uh, if you see a cricket match or anything, what do you say? Hey! You say? Or who we say? Or whistle, we do it. So now we are going to break that silence and come out of that one. 
let's make a one noise. Hey, because what I'm going to say that you have to do the acclamation of hey, and then say the word. Are you ready? So let me see one more trial run. Hey, hey. Uh, something better now, but it should be better than that. Uh, what I'm going to say is, I am connected with the everlasting connection. No, no, you have to. <laughs> hey, hey! I am connected with the everlasting connection. I'm connected with the everlasting connection. connection. The second, hey. Hey! hey! My chains are in Christ. My chains are in Christ. I am born again. I'm born again. I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. Give the glory to the Lord. Not only that, congratulate to the next person, saying that I am connected. Congratulate to the next person and say, I am connected. I am connected. I am connected. <laughs> okay, Philippians 1.18 says, Some even preached with envy, strife, and self-ambition. Strife and self-ambition. Supposing to add problem to my chain. What is that? Supposing to add affliction to my chain. But he says, I don't care. My chain is in Christ. You preach anyway, either envy or strife or self-ambition, Christ is preached. That's the ultimate goal. The this, this souls are saved and the kingdom of heaven is filled. That's it. Do it. <laughs> and he says, in this I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. Remember, zeal will remain zeal. If we have zeal, will remain zeal. If we remain focused, we will remain focused. If we remain lazy, you have to think about it. Will remain. In Philippians 1, 22, uh, 21 and 20 says, he's focused on two issues. Focus on two issues. Live is Christ, die is gain. He come to that level that if I live, I live for Christ alone. If I die, die is a gain. Who can stop this man preaching to the core? that nobody can. Because for him, if he thinks that dying is my gain, that means he will go any extent. That's what the Bible also says, one life, serve him. What he can possibly do? Kill you? No problem. You are the martyr, you are the number one position in heaven. There's no number two position. Martyrs are regarded the best. And he says, don't worry. He can take your life only. But think about the one when you reach there, you are invited. <laughs> In Philippians 1, 23 and 24, I am hard pressed between two. He comes to the situation and says, I am hard pressed in between two. Either to live or to die. He wants to serve the, serve the people but if the people gives problem, he doesn't care. But he say, it is a gain for me if I reach there. But if I reach there, it's not useful for you because you need to know him more. So what he says, he is hard pressed in between two. He has to choose. And when his choice comes, he will always say, okay, let me serve the people more. Because the more saved, the more better. Why we are thinking about this one, why we are talking about this hard-pressed situation? Because in John 3, 16, you and me, everybody know, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in, on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That was his goal, that he wants to send his son to you, that you should have an everlasting life. Don't you think that Jesus came in 
hard pressed. Jesus was hard pressed in a situation that he's asking in Gethsemane, let this cup be removed, not my will, thy will. Any answer he got? Father kept silent. Father kept silent. Even though the son is hard pressed, he is bleeding from his, what is that? Forehead. And yet, yet there is no answer. Three times he asked, no answer. Then he made up his mind. Now, this is the will of the father. If I die, there is someone who is going to be blessed. If I shed the blood, someone is going to be blessed. If I walk in this path, someone will be blessed. He saw the whole humanity and he says, Father, you are right. I will go through this process. I am hard pressed, yet I will, every step of mine is thinking about every one of us. Today we stand and meditate upon his word because he didn't take him back. He could have, he has fed 5,000 people. He, the, every sickness was healed. And he says, if I call, there are one legions of angels will come. Did he call the angels? Come down. Take care of these fellows <laughs> who is trying to beat me and do things. Did he call them? No. He was hard pressed in between two, but he said, let me go through. The same situation, you think about the Father. Father in heaven is going through the same situation and the Son is going through the same situation. Because if it is a, if it is a relationship, if someone happens something in your family, both will suffer. Both are in tension. We just enjoyed that one on the 1st of June. Here, the father is going through the same situation. The son is being beaten, all told, told everything bad, everything nonsense. He was in hanging on the cross. If you can able to save yourself, save yourself. You know what kind of word is that? Like a human being, if you tell me, I will, I will make sure that I at least I give you a punch. At least, minimum. He cannot save himself. What kind of word is that? One word will destroy everybody, but a word of God kept his word within himself for you and me. Thinking about tomorrow, my children has to stand firm, strong, face the world, and be victorious. And the Father when he can able to throw, what is that, fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah is just a matter of nothing. Lot was saved, but the whole city was upside down turned. Is that father can able to rain down a brimstone, fire and brimstone, and they would have killed him. Who are you to touch my son? But he kept hard pressed for you and me. That, that hard pressed, if we, if we focus on that one, we are nobody. We are nobody. We have to look into that one. Philippians 1, 27 says, One thing, only one thing is vital. Let your conduct, conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Everything stands for your conduct how you move, how you speak, what you do, where you are, what you are, everything stands, there is a conduct. If we maintain that one, we are in a process of progressing, or trying to achieve the goal, because the Spirit of the Lord will strengthen you into that one. 1 John 2, 16 says, For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, Lust of the eye and pride of life. That means we have three major portion. We have to really stand firm. Because the devil will attack on these three points. And we have to stand firm, which Jesus 
has overcome him on the same tree. Adam lost, but our Jesus won the victory. As GMI, we must do this. We have to stand, stand, in, stand fast in one spirit. We are one family. We have to stand in one spirit, one mind. Strive together. We have to walk together and do things together. For the gospel's sake, if we hold one another, strengthen one another, and be for one another, that's why they call for intercessory prayer. We have to stand together. We have to see that my brother and sister has been set free or going strong in their life. Philippians 1, 28 says, terrifying adversaries are there in the world. You cannot say that it is not there. They bring you a word that will make you fear. Don't give that one. Don't heed to that one. Because the one who is doing that one is already kept one place for him. That is called perdition. Right? Perdition means a state of eternal punishment into which a sinful and unrepented person passes after death. So don't worry about the guy who is trying to bring fear in your life or things which will pertain to set, bring a setback in your, in your walk with the Lord and to serve him with all diligence. Because it says in Philippians 1.29, but to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ. What are you granted? Salvation. New life in Christ. Not only to believe in him, but also suffer for his if there is any suffering comes, don't step back. Pray and go through and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. He will guide you in every step of you, where you should go, how you should go, where you should reach. There is a goal. There is a goal. When we do that one, we will be there. In Philippians 3, 8 and 11, we're going to see. I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. What is that? I count everything lost. What I'm going to consider? Excellence in the knowledge of Christ. That means my focus is the knowledge of Christ. My thought life is the knowledge of Christ. Where I'm going to go, the way that he, his knowledge and his understanding lead me, I will go through that one. For whom I suffer the loss of all things, not feeling sorry for that, I count them all as count them as rubbish. My goal is to gain Christ. My goal is to gain Christ. My chains are in Christ. My life is attached to the Christ, and I am going to be for Christ. So ultimately, everything stands in one circle. I am for Christ. If I walk. I walk for Christ. If I talk, I talk for Christ. If I look, I look for Christ. So let me exercise my, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in my life and leave all the worldly, worldly stuff. And then if at all anything to come rubbing me, also we overcome that and then walk in the newness of life. And he says in ninth word, be found in him. Be found in him. Law produces what? Self-righteousness. Through faith in Christ gains righteousness, which is from the God by faith. Today, she opened up something very good. Look expectantly. That's what she said, right? Look expectantly. Because I always see what is the word comes in the beginning and how it goes. What song it starts with. Because I want to see the interconnect everything to it. What was the song, first song they sang? Holy Spirit, 
to rain down. Because his raining down will transform my life. His raining down will strengthen my life. His raining down will lead me through that I will reach my goal and I will be in a process of advancing in my life. If we want to advance in life, if we want to do that one, it should be rain down. But when you come in expectancy, you will receive. And he, what the word says, he kept his hand open. He never closed his fist on anything. Anything you want, his hand is open. Come, take it. Rejoice. Have the fullness of everything. Have the fullness of everything in your life. That nothing I withhold from you. When I cannot withhold my own son, what is there in the world that I am going to withhold? Nothing. He has accomplished it. Lay down his life, and he says, there is no sprinkling. I mean, there was a sprinkling of blood that because of that we are today, we are sanctified. We are justified. Because his righteousness is covering us. Without that, we cannot reach the goal. Because his righteousness, because of the sprinkling of blood, that I can boldly walk into the holy of holy, and I can talk to my father openly. And he says, I kept my hands open, my son. Come, take it. But come with expectancy. That's a beautiful word to start today. Come with expectancy. When you come to the fellowship, come with expectancy. When, you, when, you're, when you're going to pray and ask him, be expectant. The expected gets it. You tell the children, they expect what they want. And they will make sure that you give what they want. Because they come in expectancy. That's what he is saying. Come as a child and ask me, I will give it to you. There is nothing, there is nothing I withhold to you. The heaven is yours. Jesus is went there. He is not sitting there. He, of course, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, but he is working. I am preparing a place for you. What a wonderful thing. He is preparing a mansion for you. But the mansion, every item, you have to work here. And then you send it there. Every soul will be a stone. Or, I mean, okay, why is stone? Every soul is a room for you. <laughs> if it is going to be a mansion, let it think that way. Every soul will be a room. Every soul will be an extension of your mansion which he is building. He is not, and you are not left alone. He is going to come back because I don't know the way there, but he will come back and take me with him. So I am not left here alone. I am not going to be left in the middle. I am not going to be left in the heaven. He is going to come and he says, come on, let's go. Because when you go to a place, when you don't know the place, and if the person who takes you to the place and says, this is it, this is your place, I will be so happy. Verse 3.10 says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I may know him, the power of the resurrection. It is a, what a wonderful thing that we have to think that one. The same way Paul thinks, that I may know him and the power of the resurrection. 1 Thessalonians 4.16, let us see. 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. That means you are not an orphan. He is going to come with a shout, with an acclamation. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> right? <laughs> the same high will be there for you. And he says, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise. Are you ready for the trumpet sound? Are you ready for the acclamation sound? Are you ready for the archangels to come and say, come on my children, it's time for you to go to the Father's place. 
because when uh, when the i mean uh, when the women get pregnant they like to go to the father's place mother's place because they know that there the comfort is there so <clears throat> and the fellowship of the suffering romans 8:17 and if and if children then heirs that means we are we are the partakers everything he owns we are partakers whatever he gained we are partakers heirs of god and joined here with christ my god we have such a position that archangels will be thinking that my god we have to serve they are they are the co-heirs with christ if indeed we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together that means if we do our job if we walk in our ways that will please him one day that we are the co-heirs with him and we will be we will be rejoicing and walking with him and the, when you rise up you are there by any means i attain to the resurrection from the dead that's what he says by any means any means i may attain to the resurrection from the dead that means our focus is so much so by any means i have to follow christ by any means i must be there by any means i must enjoy the resurrection by any means i have to have the fellowship of his suffering we have to do come to that focus then you are not alone you are not alone who is there with you the holy spirit is with you to guide you in every step let your conduct be in perfect let your walk be in perfect way and when you do move with the power of the holy spirit he is going to guide you he is going to strengthen you he is going to empower you because what happens when you do that one there are many souls will be touched. you don't even have to say a word they will know they will know and they will come to you i said what you have i need where you are i want to be what you enjoy i want to enjoy where you are going i want to go because we have a master master builder jesus is our builder he will build he will strengthen he will lead amen so all we need to do is how we are going to put things in order come with expectancy your father has kept his hand open come receive take enjoy be refreshed and be happy all i am for that's what he says everything you are the co-heirs enjoy there's nothing left undone everything is done if we walk in conduct amen let's pray holy and merciful and gracious father this gospel is not just word only this gospel is not just word only but also in power and in the holy spirit power and the holy spirit and much in assurance in much in assurance and we come father enlighten our hearts enlighten our mind so that we may see the goodness that you kept ahead of us so that we may understand the very position where we are standing so that we may understand and ask you give the souls and we will tell the good news to them we will understand that what you have for us is great and mighty you are great and mighty in everything let the power of the word work in our life let the spirit of the lord take complete control of our life let thy name be exalted and be glorified in jesus name we pray amen yes you are to sing the song now.